We are all unique. But despite this, human beings are 99.9% .9 genetically similar to each other, and large chunks of our genome perform similar functions across the animal kingdom. Chimpanzees and even domestic cats are genetically similar to humans. This means that the tiny 0.1% of your genetic code is critical in identifying who you are, what makes you unique from someone else, and what diseases you could develop. Our DNA is a mystery, but how do our genes make us who we are, and is it possible to change your genetic code to cure diseases? Inside each one of us are trillions of cells, and every single cell is a system that is like a small factory responsible for making proteins in your body. Proteins are the building blocks of life, and every cell in the human body contains protein. Your body produces or synthesizes millions of different proteins that are responsible for every task in your body. Perhaps the most important part of the cell is the nucleus. Inside the nucleus, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. In a single pair, there is one chromosome from your mother and one from your father. Chromosomes contain the genetic code of your body. If you stretch all the DNA in your body end to end, it would reach to the sun and back over 600 times. Just how important is DNA? The entire history of our planet since the Big Bang has been about the eternal struggle of all life, from bacteria to humans, to survive and propagate each species. So how did certain individuals adapt and survive different conditions like the cold? Let's look at a few examples of genetic evolution. American white-footed hamsters normally have a dark color. However, another species of this animal that lives in an area with very light soil has a lighter color than its relatives. This step of evolution helped the species become harder to see by birds of prey, and light-colored hamsters were more likely to survive in their surrounding habitat because of this. But what happened that changed their normal dark color to a lighter one? It turns out that in the light-colored hamsters, a mutation occurred that deleted three nucleotides encoding the amino acid serine from the sequence. Only three molecules, which aren't even visible under a microscope, allowed the dark-colored hamsters to change their fur to a light color, giving them a higher chance of survival from being eaten. Another example of evolution is an ancestor of wild rice. The grains would fall to the ground, but were not easy to collect, and a lot of rice was lost. But at one point, a mutation occurred in the seed-shattering gene, SH4, which was responsible for the formation of the release layer at the disconnection sites. As a result of the mutation, the functionality of the seed-shattering gene in wild rice was disrupted and the rice acquired the necessary properties to stop falling. One more example can be seen in dogs. Less than 100 generations ago, dog breeders bred a new breed of short-legged fox hunters. At some point during breeding, a mutation occurred on chromosome 3 in the FGFR3 gene. The protein encoded by this gene is called the fibroblast growth factor receptor. Mutations in this gene led to a variety of skeletal developmental disorders, including shortening of the limbs. Because humans wanted to select for shorter-limbed dogs, all dogs that had this mutation were bred, and puppies without it were rejected. All of these mutations show the importance of DNA. But could we make changes to our DNA to become better? Genetic engineering. Genome editing, which is also called gene editing, are technologies that give scientists the ability to change an organism's DNA. There are thousands of genetic disorders that can be passed on from one generation to the next, which are sometimes serious and debilitating. In fact, one in 25 children is born with some form of genetic disease. Gene editing has already been used to modify immune cells to fight cancer or develop resistance to HIV. It could also be used to fix defective genes in human embryos, preventing babies from inheriting serious diseases. Gene editing has also been used in the agricultural industry to create seedless tomatoes, gluten-free wheat and mushrooms that don't turn brown. One of the more incredible things happening is that researchers have begun to use gene editing to make pig organs safe to transplant into humans. The problem is that porcine endogenous retroviruses are permanently embedded in the pig genome, 
and research has shown that they can infect human cells, posing a potential hazard. Researchers in the US used the precision gene editing tool CRISPR-Cas9 combined with gene repair technology to deactivate 100% of porcine endogenous retroviruses in a line of pig cells. Piglets cloned from the connective tissue cells turned out to be free of viruses. What is CRISPR-Cas9 and how does it work? The biggest breakthrough in gene editing, considered one of the field's greatest achievements, is a molecular tool called CRISPR-Cas9. This tool gives medical researchers the ability to cut out or replace harmful genes in an organism's genetic code. During some of the first gene editing trials, scientists collected cells from a patient's blood, made the needed genetic edits, and then injected the modified cells back into the patient. This gene editing approach looks promising as a treatment for people with HIV. When the HIV virus enters the body, it infects and kills cells of the immune system. In order to infect cells, HIV must first latch on to specific proteins of the surface of the immune cells. In order to combat this infection, researchers took immune cells from a patient's blood and used gene editing to cut out the DNA that the cells need to make the specific surface protein that the virus must latch on to. Without these proteins, the HIV virus can no longer gain entry into immune cells. A similar approach has been used to combat certain types of cancer by using the same method of taking immune cells from the patient's blood and using gene editing to produce surface proteins that bind to cancer cells and eliminate them. In 2015, a baby girl with aggressive leukemia became the first human in the world to be treated with designer immune cells that were genetically engineered to wipe out her cancer. Scientists modified her T-cells by giving them an extra gene that would target and attack leukemia cells. They also disabled other genes so they won't attack the immune system of the girl. Weeks passed and the trial worked. The most impressive thing about modifying cells outside of the body is that they can be checked before they are injected back into a patient in order to make sure that the editing process had no problems. The creation of genetically engineered viruses. But what if researchers wanted to program cells so they started performing a special task? For example, scientists want a T-cell to synthesize a special protein on its surface so the cell can find, latch onto, and destroy cancer cells. One way to do this is to use engineered viruses. The goal of these viruses is to deliver DNA or RNA to specific cells. Now the cell has the instructions to synthesize certain proteins. In animals, these viruses have achieved promising results in fighting a variety of cancers, including osteosarcoma, which is a form of bone cancer. So far, the problem in adapting this treatment to humans is that most people have antibodies to the viruses used in animal studies. There have been some dramatic results using CAR T-cell therapy in some children and adults suffering from leukemia or lymphoma, but there have been some severe side effects. Cancer vaccines are another form of immunotherapy. They involve gene therapy where tumor cells are taken from the patient and are re-engineered with genes that cause them to become more recognizable to the immune system. The altered cells are infused back into the patient with an immune-stimulating compound. Now the boosted immune system can launch a powerful attack not only on the newly infused cancer cells but also on other rogue cells in the body. We live in an exciting time and this is just the beginning of the gene editing age. Who knows, maybe soon humanity could become immortal. Thanks for watching. We appreciate your support. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel. We will make sure to deliver videos each month for you. And if you have some ideas on any video topics, you can write us in the comments. If you'd like to see the full version video where we show how proteins are synthesized and how CRISPR-Cas9 works, you can check out this video here or see the link in the description.